Now, first I have to be completely honest with you guys. It was extremely difficult for me to decide on the first faction cruiser to fly. I thought about the Celos. I also thought about the Chameleon. I mean, both are fantastic, but my friends have showed me a lot of very interesting builds with the Fiends, and as you guys know, I love to fly fast ships, I also love to fly tanky ships, and the Fiend is a combination of both. This cute little boat is both very fast, and it can be extremely tanky. This is probably the tankiest faction cruiser that we currently have in the game. Although, I think the Chameleon has the potential to be uh, very tanky as well, but the Phantasm, well in this case the Fiend, uh, is known for, uh, for its speed and it's known for its tank. So, let's take a look at the trait description of this ship. This cute little boat is a interdictor, which means it can open bubbles in nullsec. And well, yeah, that means I will be bubbling in the future. Can't wait to see how, how that works. So, uh, it will be time to check out the trait description of the Fiend, and let's see what stats this little ship can offer. Robos, it can fit shield field modules, it can also fi uh, fit warp disruption field generators. Expert medium laser operation bonus will give you plus 17.5% medium laser damage, plus 10% medium laser tracking speed. So for these ships, you need to have expert skills. That's, that's very interesting. Expert cruiser command bonus per level will give you plus 25% afterburner speed increase, minus 6% six per, uh, six afterburner capacity rate, plus 75% shield, and the expert propulsion jamming bonus will give you extra, I guess, bubble size. In this case, plus 5% extra warp disruption field effective range. Overall, pretty interesting. Okay, well, uh, attributes and fittings. One drone, five high slots, three medium slots, five low slots, three combat and three engineering rigs. Now next week this ship will lose one high slot, so it will have four high slots, but that should not affect the performance a lot. This thing is still ridiculously strong, even with four lasers. Primarily a shield tank, the Fiend is quite fast, uh, after all it has a bonus on afterburners, and it's probably one of the fastest cruisers with an afterburner, which means speed tanking is going to work really well. It also has a decent capacitor and a decent capacitor recharge rate, so we don't have to worry about the capacitor on this ship. It should last for a very, very long time. So, uh, let's take a look at the build that I have on this ship. Now, this is my personal, f uh, this is my personal fiend, and next time when, uh, next week actually, when uh, I get access to the test server, when the test server is actually up, I'll show you a lot of different builds, but today I'll be focusing on my own ship and basically the build that I will use on this ship. So I use pulse leathers, one scrambler, dual webs, one afterburner damage control, dual adaptives and one large shield extender. I really love the passive tank on the Fiend, it's an amazing uh, passive tank ship. As for the nanocore, you technically can use the old ones, they are compatible but uh, currently there is only one nanocore for the faction cruisers, it is the trailblazer nanocore, so yeah, currently very limited choice for nanocores, but in the future that will be increased. Now as for the rigs, I have one anti-EM, anti-thermal, and there is one laser burst adapter, I find this to work really well, this is a relatively cheap build. Now, you can go and use a full DPS build on the Fiend. Uh, you have decent stats for the shield, 26,000 in in shield at the moment, with some pretty good shield resistances. Now, again, uh, you can technically go full DPS, and now have 741.37 DPS. 
Keep in mind, uh, the game is a little bit bugged, so some modules might not work at one point, or some rigs, which will be fixed, but uh, this is just uh, one thing that's, that's currently ongoing, so don't be surprised if you see a lot of different, uh, a lot of different damage numbers on, on this ship. You can also do a PvE build like this, I mean, you still have some fantastic tank, and you can add heat sinks for a high sec PvE. I'll show you uh, that a little bit later. But I will most likely use this ship uh, for PvP and primarily for PvP. And as for the rigs, I will probably go with something like like this current setup. We'll add one integration rig instead of the one burst adapter and I'll just assemble the rig right away. Now I will try to keep the 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 rigs as cheap as possible. I mean kinda funny that I'm going to be flying a ten billion ship with cheap rigs, but the price will go down and I'm also talking about the I'm also talking about the IP cost. These things cost a lot. So since I'll be focusing on full tank, I want to cover all the shield resistance holes and 90,000 hit points in the station. 59, 56, 61 and 59%. Honestly, pretty good. Uh, pretty good. Undocking. Let me undock and let me show you the active, the active stats of the Fiend. And of course my game decides to glitch out. Lovely. Well, let me, let me quickly uh, restart the game. Okay, there we go. Much better. So, Adapt is on, and Afterburn is on. Let's take a look at the stats. The DPS, 609.24, which is okay. 170,000 hit points, 82, 81, 83, and 82 percent. 1.5 kilometer per second is the Afterburn speed. Okay, well, pretty good. Pretty solid. Now, this ship has a special mode, a defense mode, which is working as intended, but the values are a bit messed up. 8, 9, 8, 9, 90 and 8, 9 percent resistance. And here you can take a look at the defense mode stats. Now I, I believe uh, they will be changing this, so this is definitely uh, not the final, uh, not the final stats of the defense mode. We will see what will happen next week, but that's currently how it works. And yeah, uh, 270,000 hit points on uh, on this little cruiser. It also gives you some armor resistance, which is fantastic. Gives you a lot, uh, a lot more chances to survive. 801,000 hit points with the damage roll. 91, uh, 96, 96, 97, and 96% resistance. Yikes. This little thing is a brick. And you still go 707 meters per second with the afterburner, so it's still relatively fast. And well, this is why I like the ship. It has tank, it has decent DPS, Docking request it's fast. Accepted. It has everything that I ever wanted from a ship, and it's a cruiser. As you guys know, I'm primarily a cruiser pilot. Uh, I have the best kills for cruisers, literally everything on all five. Now, I will also play around with the build here. Uh, just to show you some of the other ideas that you can do. Now, since my power grid is uh, a bit messed up because uh, there is a lot of bugs in the game currently, so uh, yeah, you can technically do a dual large extender builds on the Fiend, and that will give you about forty-five uh, thousand in shield. Overall, resistance will be about eighty-eight, eighty-five percent. And if you decide to go a little bit wild with the with the rigs, you can get that up to 94% resistance with dual extenders with 45,000 hit points, which will result in about about 250,000 hit points without the damage control, or well, without the defense mode. With the defense mode, it's about 1.5 million hit points, <laughs> and with the damage control, of course. So. Uh, you get a ridiculously tanky little cruiser. You can also do a active tank, and I actually do like the active tank on this ship as well. You can slap a large Nosferatu and a large booster, but since you know the game is a little a little bit bugged now, the power is not displayed properly and uh, the modules don't don't fit. 
Before I started recording this, it did work, uh, but now for some reason it doesn't work. So uh, yeah, waiting for that to be fixed. It will be fixed very quickly. But yeah, you can do a large Nosferatu and a large Shield Booster build with basically the exact same adaptives and with the damage control you have the exact same resistance but a little bit less shield and an active tank. So you can go passive or active on this ship uh, in both uh, in both ways. It it is going to be uh, ridiculously tanky. And I think the way to fight the Phantasm and the Fiend is to go with uh, a tanky build, speed tank or tank. I mean, you have an afterburner. Afterburners are perfect for speed tanking. And this little sh this little this little cute ship has everything that uh, is necessary for a proper speed tank. Now my speed is also not working properly, uh, I just noticed that. It should be 2.1 km per second, but it's 1.5. Oh well, it's still pretty fast, so not a big deal. And with the defense modes, 165,000 hit points, 89, 89, 19, 89. I mean, this is still ridiculously tanky for a cruiser. Imagine you tackle something and that something can kill you. And you just wait for the reinforcement to arrive. 489,000 hit points with the damage roll and with the defense mode active. Docking the defense mode is accepted. basically like a damage control, like the old school damage control that gives you active 50% resistance up on activation. I m really missed that module. It was such a good module, I loved it. Okay, well let me uh, do something a bit different here as well. You can do dual webs as scrambler and you can slap a large capacitor battery. I mean, you have a lot of power to play around with, so you can do something like this as well, but you lose the damage control. In my personal experience, I really like to uh, use the damage control, based on my experience, of course. And I would probably go with the passive tank just because of the damage control, or I, I would probably slap one medium Nosferatu and orbit at 11 kilometers because the ship can easily do that. Uh, it does have good tracking, especially with the with the new skills. If you have the new skill, even the basic ones, uh, they're more than enough to uh, basically maintain the ma maintain a proper accuracy and proper tracking, even if you're moving quite fast. Now I'll just uh, return the return the previous builds that I'll be using. Again, the I really like the passive shield tank on this ship. Passive speed tank uh, does work really well. You can do something like this with triple adaptives, one large extender and an afterburner. And here we can slap a large neutralizer or a medium neutralizer or a Nosferatu, large Nosferatu, medium, medium Nosferatu, depending on which one you need. The Nosferatu has been buffed, the neutralizer as well. They are now much more efficient to. Uh, Undocking. They're much more efficient than they used to be. So they can benefit the ship quite a bit. Now, the build that I would use and the build that you will see today in PvP, yes, I'll be doing PvP today in this, uh, in this little boat. I know who is crazy enough to run PvP while half of the modules of your ship are not working. Well, that's me. I mean, I just have to use the ship in combat. It's just how it goes. I mean, that's that's just how it goes. With triple that, with triple that is on 109,000 hit points, 84, 83, 85, and 85 percent resistance. You know, I really love this ship. This is such a fantastic little boat. And with the defense mode active, the stats are even higher. 304,000 hit points, 91, 90, 91, 91. Jesus, this thing is. This little boat is wild. I love it. This this is what I'm saying. That this might very well be the tankiest factory cruiser in the game. Uh, th th it's, it's just insane. And now, before I forget, this is a PvE build that works really well if you slap triple laser burst adapters. But since uh, since uh, it would be a since it it would cost a lot to just swap the rigs around. I'll keep the current rig setup when I go run PvE with this, but if you plan to use the ship for PvE, use triple laser bo burst adapters. Your DPS will be about 1547, I have tested it out before recording. And if you have the Warp pulse crystal implant or focus crystal implant, your DPS eventually will be about 3.5000 to 4.5000, 4 
which honestly for PvE is more than enough. For PvE, for PvP, I mostly prefer uh, tank and speed tank. I mean that's basically one of the main traits for this level ship. And well, since we're talking about PvP, and since I uh, primarily do PvP, I mean that's my favorite aspect of the game. Our first target for today will be a Ferox. Well then, uh, this Ferox is unfortunate enough to be my target practice. They have been webbed and scrambled. I'll be orbiting at 11 kilometers with the afterburn. Should maintain uh, a relatively stable orbit. Now having a ship move fast is good, but if it's going too fast, then you might get slingshotted or Any the orbit might be detected. elliptical, which means that uh, at one point you will lose your points. So if your ship is going above 2 km per second, make sure to adjust the orbit so that your ship can maintain a stable orbit around target so that you don't lose webs or points on them. We're being warp scrambled. And well, uh, the Ferox is now in hold. They have a scrambler and a neutralizer, but that's not going to do much. Actually, no, it's a Nosferatu, not, not neutralizer, my apologies. That's a Nosferatu effect. We're and well, attack. that was the first kill for the Fiend. And I got some nice loot. Let's warp out. We're under attack. Again, this little boat is extremely fun to use, and warp drive active. In most cases, I'll fight the passive shield tank, but I will also um, uh, also try out the active tank and just to see which one I like the most. But currently, this is my primary build for the Fiend, and of course, with time, my build will will be changed. Uh, I will be changing the rigs, basically. After I learn the ship, after I really get to learn the ship, I will adjust so that I can cover all the weak spots as best as possible and so that I can enhance the ship's performance as much as possible. And well, this was a pretty, I would say, good kill. They had a web. This was a semi PvP build, which is kind of interesting. Next target, we have. Actually, I, I forgot what ship we have. Uh, it's definitely something... I think it's a Cinnabal, not really sure. In any case, I'm about to... We're about to go and engage the target. Actually, my apologies. Uh, it's a Bella Cruiser, a Tornado. Okay, my friend reminded me what target it is. Warp drive my first active. faction cruiser in the game was a Phantasm, so it's kind of nostalgic to be back at at something that looks like a phantasm, although it's not a phantasm, it's a bit better than a phantasm. It's a special ship. Now my implant doesn't matter currently, I just have basically an implant that can help me uh, in combat and it just happened to be the thermal circulation implant, although it is funny because the defense mode kind of works really well with the with the thermal circulation because I have some pretty good armor resistance as well. I have good shield and armor resistance which is kind of funny so even if I lose my shield I still have a lot of time uh, on armor and this is Warp why one of the active. very weird moments, one of the very weird moments where you can use uh, the thermal circulation on a shield tank basically uh, does help in case your shield goes down. Still primarily a shield tank but it has nearly the same armor resistances as well. I find that really funny. Uh, so it does it does buy you a lot of time if, if you end up losing your shield. 413 million and this was a tanky well a attempt to be a tanky tornado. It did have some good stats though. I have to admit it did have some good stats. Next, I will go and, uh, let's see, you know, I, I got, I get it distracted every time I undock my modules, are just offline, Warp and in this case, active. the rigs are also offline, but I didn't have time to turn them on. Oh, no. 
well, I mean, th this is literally. I, w I have to admit, this this is probably the the most annoying bug to date in the game. Your modules randomly shutting down. Oh well. And well, I think hopefully that's not going to affect my speed much. Well, the defense mode is active for some reason. Let me try to approach the Muller. The Muller is using a micro warp drive and they are using beam lasers. Fair enough. And my speed is still not 2.1 kilowatt per second. Oh no. Oh well. I mean, it does add a bit of... A bit of excitement to, to the whole thing. Well, if my if my rigs were working, uh, that Mahler would have been would have been caught. In any case, it was a pretty funny attempt, honestly. And my laser wasn't active. Warp drive active. Oh, Eve Echoes. The bugs in this game are funny. Next, we have a Apocalypse Striker, and I'm rushing as quickly as possible. They are at the other side. I was uh, chasing them from uh, high sec to our home system. Well, not our home system, but to, to this place. And they landed right in a bubble. And they're already taking damage. Hopefully I'm not too late with the party. And there is the Apocalypse Tiger. Let me quickly rush to the, to the ship. And let me turn the lasers that are not working. Oh... Oh, whoa, 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 no, no, no. You know, it's kind of, it's very funny, I mean... Uh, what affects my ship affects all ships currently in the game, right? So, we are all literally fighting to get all the modules online as quickly as possible. Which, you know, kind of adds a bit more excitement to, to combat. Uh, and... I really hope they fix this as quickly as possible, because, man... Uh, it's it's funny how many how many times I have undocked today with my <laughs> modules not working. Ramming speeds. I mean, I love to ram ships, and this is nice. There we go. That apocalypse tiger is not going to have a very good day today. And there 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 goes the apocalypse tiger. Nice. Two point two billion, perfect, perfectly. Actually, I think that's a good value for um, warp drive active for that little ship. Okay, and now let's do some PVE uh, with the with the fiend. Now, next week when uh, I have a properly fitted fiend, uh, where I can actually show what what the PVE build looks like. Uh, I expect about 3.5 and 4.5 thousand DPS, perhaps it might be a bit We're harder than that, but attack. the Fiend does definitely give out some very good uh, DPS. My friend has about 2.3 thousand DPS with a tanky build, but that Fiend is a balance between PvE and PvP, it can do both. Uh, this Fiend that I currently fly is mostly for PvP, so it's not going to... So it's not going to have the highest DPS, but for high sec you don't really need to uh, have much tank. Basically, triple heat sinks, a large booster, a large Nosferatu, and afterburner is more than enough to sustain the the ship. Speed tanking on Sancho ships is, I would say, the best. I've probably they're the fastest ships with afterburners. As for the storyline missions, I wouldn't really be using this for storylines because you will get jumped, that's for sure. And these ships are currently very expensive and... I mean, you technically can run storylines with it, but you have to be very careful. And for the storylines, I would be using one of the tank We're builds with a large Nosferatu to maintain an active tank. 
Active tanking is definitely the way to go when uh, you are running PvE. And so far, uh, with my hybrid builds between PvP and PvE, I'm quite satisfied with the damage output. Again, if you have a fiend that's specifically built for PvE, your DPS will be much much higher. And if you have the Focus Crystal or Pulse Crystal, your DPS will also be much much higher. If I would to add the heat sink general units, my DPS would be about 5.5 thousand with the focus crystal. Which for a cruiser is uh, honestly a very good DPS and that DPS is going to be sustained so you don't have to worry about uh, the DPS much although you have to be you have to be careful not to miss the target but the tracking with the pulse letters is generally speaking really good i also thought about beam lasers and the beam laser build might be uh, interesting as well you will have you will have lower dps but higher alpha damage and much longer range i think both builds are very interesting to use but i personally prefer to use pulse letters for the extra dps and with the pulse others you can orbit outside of the web range of other ships, which you know helps if you're fighting a battleship. But for something like that to work you have to have a long range disruptor. So it would have to you would have to change uh, the ship would have to be a bit more different. In most cases, even if you're webbed, you you will be faster than targets. In is uh, if you are fighting a Vigilant, for example, that's probably not going to be the case, but uh, I guess most of the ships that don't have a crazy web bonus, uh, you will be faster than them. Now, a Vigilant will be uh, a challenge, I would say, especially a Vigilant uh, with full DPS, but again, this ship can have a damage control and it has a defense mode. So, I think a Vigilant that decides to get too close to it is going to get roasted pretty quickly. Uh, they, they will have issues to go through the tank on this thing. Uh, with an active tank, you can do the same thing. Although for an active tank, I would actually uh, change the engineering rigs to improve the capacitor. You can make it capacitor stable with a large Nostrato, a large booster, and with capacitor rigs. Which is honestly a very... A uh, very interesting idea that I will be trying out. I mean, I, again, this is this is my personal ship, and I'm showing you the builds and the ideas that I'm going to use on this ship. But when I get my hands on uh, on the other fiends, where I can basically change the modules and rigs how I like, then active. then I'll show you uh, a lot of different ideas. Here I'm limited by by ISK. And I'm basically limited by uh, by the modules. That's why I prefer to go on the test server to show you uh, what kind of ideas I can come up with uh, a certain ship. After all, my goal is to show you guys a lot of different builds and a lot of different ideas to We're under to help you at building your own ship, or you know, at least to uh, try and inspire to come up with uh, your own attack. build. That's basically my goal. I want to help everyone uh, to build their ship in a very good way. Now speaking of building the ships, the Phantasm is... well the Phantasm, I, I, I will keep calling this the Phantasm uh, because it just looks like a Phantasm but it's not a Phantasm, so my apologies if, if I uh, if I end up calling the, the Fiend Phantasm, uh, it's not a Phantasm, it's a Fiend, different ships. But this is, besides the revelation the only ship that has a single integration rig. Now why did I slap a integration rig for tank? Well, I want to have all the resistances balanced out and for that you don't have to go spend a lot of risk. You can basically copy the current build that, that I have on the ship and your stats will look uh, really good. But you also can uh, do same build with full integrations. And you can basically increase the shield volume, you can increase the resistance even more, you can add extra shield boost performance. 
you have a lot of options and I will definitely be exploring all that just to see what might work the best for this but currently currently the two builds that I would say uh, and this is well I would say but uh, most of my friends have told me the same thing most of the builds that seem to work really well for this ship right now are passive shield tank builds and uh, a active shield tank with a large booster these are the two builds that seem to be uh, seem to be working the best for for this little ship Okay, I'm getting distracted in the in the background here. There's a lot of like a lot of questions. Uh, for example, 800,000 hit point fiend. Yes, I have a 800,000 hit point fiend when uh, everything is up and up and running. I mean, there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of recording for me. That's for sure. I mean, I have to record like four new battleships, four new cruisers. The way how I will record the other cruisers will be a bit different. Uh, I'll be, uh, I'll be fighting the, I'll be fighting the factory cruisers one v one in the in the test environment, just to show you all the different tactics and how to counter these ships because I think that will be fun I find a way how I can effectively uh, simulate an actual PvP battle so I think that's going to be fun to see I'll try to cover literally like every scenario possible uh, because I, I know there is like a lot of different things that, ha that, that, that can happen in the game and Uh, my goal would be to try and cover most of them So Fairly sure that that's going to be fun And I know I'll be asked this many times, but uh, For example, what what is the quotation marks on this? What's the best? Well, there is no there's no best fact because every single one of these ships is unique in their own way they're basically made to be different and they all excel at one thing but at the same time they also are bad at some other things for example the fiend has good tank and it's it has good speed but its dps is probably going to be the lowest if we compare them to the other faction uh, special cruisers but it's also a power ship so that works for it, I guess. Bubbles will work really well for solo PvP because stabs will not work. And I will be flying this ship in no space a lot more often just because of the fact that I have a bubble on it. Basically, uh, a fandom with a interdictor bubble. That's going to be fun. We'll solve the issue of stabs at least for me because nothing will be able to run from it and it's not going to be easy to kill as well because of the ridiculous tank that it has now the problem one of the ships that might be a good counter to this uh, is a Ashmo, basically blood raiders they have the electronic warfare bonus on those fighters and neutralizers so they might they might be the only ships that i would try and not directly fight uh, head on because they have a good chance at killing me because, you know, that's just how Blood Raiders work. Blood Raiders are literally the best uh, in 1v1 when there is no stab involved. But we will see how that will work. So far, I am... I'm pretty happy with the Fiend. Not really sure which one I will buy next. I think the Celos might be my next 
our ship to buy because I already fly the Cinnabal. The Cinnabal is after all of my favorite ships, so uh, we'll we'll probably fly that one as well. But yeah, uh, the performance on this little ship is fantastic. Definitely a if you like the Phantasm, I definitely recommend that you try out this ship. It's it's ridiculously fun and in a lot of ways it's actually better than the Phantasm but at the same time they're also two different ships and I'm very curious to see how this thing will work next week now again, as I mentioned before uh, the patch broke a lot of things in the, in the fitting window so uh, the numbers that you that you see here will be probably changed because there's a hundred percent something something that's not working for example my auxiliary thrusters seem not to be working uh, my tank rigs seem to be working but I don't trust them that much the modules uh, seem to be shutting themselves off on and off randomly that's also one thing that has to be fixed but overall uh, does seem to be you know uh, going to be working better next week or no, that doesn't have to be next week I mean I, I think the, the the issue with the modules will be fixed like tomorrow or in two days I'm fairly sure the developers are working on it and while the bug is like extremely annoying I admit like the bug makes my blood boil I think it makes everyone mad especially if you try to, to do PvP you don't know when your module will just stop working or if you just forget to, to turn on the module you can't turn the module on in warp so you have to do it before it also can get turned off if you jump through the gate, dock, all that is literally turning off your modules currently and rigs and implants so there's a lot of things to consider when uh, when looking at the numbers of the ship today but I have to admit I'm pretty happy with the Fiend Warp drive definitely a nostalgic feeling flying something that looks like a Phantasm uh, the Phantasm again was my first faction cruiser and I have a special place for that ship, and I will have a special place for the Fiend as well. So, uh, I'll be back on this ship. You can expect some PvP runs with the Fiend very soon. I, I, I don't know. I, I think I'm one of the only, <laughs> only pilots who is crazy enough to to eat 10 billion -isk special ships in PvP while modules are not working properly. That means even if you have warp core stabs, they might not work because they might be offline. We're very, uh, a very funny, but at the same time, a very, very annoying bug. But in any case, hope that you guys enjoyed. If you would like more and if you would like to support me, feel free to like and subscribe. And with that being said, stay safe, fly safe, and as always, I'll see you next time.